Jim Jeffries is an angry manager at the moment, and no wonder. Don't talk to him about late goals. knows that one point out of the last nine is the hard way to learn the game's not over until the final whistle goes. Hearts haven't won in seven in the league. Will it turn around tonight? Live from the Bank of Scotland Scottish Premier League, it's Hearts against Dundee United. Both Hearts and Dundee United have been active in the transfer market this week. While Jim Jeffries has been trying to buy players, Paul Stark has sold his top scorer, Billy Dodds, to Rangers. Now, we'll hear from Dodds later. But, Charlie Nicholas, what kind of message does this transfer send out to the Dundee United supporters tonight? Well, I think it's an extremely negative one. I think if you're a season ticket holder, they haven't been coming back in their droves. I think the best bit of business they did was getting Paul Sturrock back at Dundee United. But since then, he's gradually shaped the team. But I think this is a real piece of negative news for Dundee United. They're sitting third in the Premier League. They're only six points behind Celtic. A win tonight would get them to three points behind Celtic. That's all positive thoughts. But you're losing your top goal scorer, your best supplier, and undoubtedly the best talent in the club I've got at present. They've got a lot of good young kids. And I think it's putting unnecessary pressure back on the coach. I don't think it was a good decision from Jim McLean and his board at all. Maybe OK to sell him to the English Premiership, but not to one of the old I firm. I don't think anywhere, but I think least of all to sell, to sell him to Rangers, who are just above them in the, in the league, is nothing but negative for me. OK. Well, Rangers didn't play yesterday, but they still lead the table by a point from Celtic with two games in hand. A win for Dundee United tonight would leave them three points behind in third. A win for Hearts would move them above Dundee and level on points with Hibs. So, let's get to Tynecastle and join our match commentators, David Proven and first, Ian Crocker. Thank you, Jim. Well, Dundee United are currently the best that Scotland has to offer outside the old firm. That's a position, though, that Hearts feel they should be in, so it could get personal at Tynecastle tonight. Key men Colin Cameron and Gary Locke are both suspended for Hearts and to add to their problems Thomas Flugel has a badly bruised foot and Rob McKinnon suffered a hamstring injury in training yesterday. In come Jackson, Murray, Adam and former Barcelona sensation Juanjo. Roddy McKenzie is preferred to Gilles Rousset in goal. Of the new signings Fitzroy Simpson is banned while ex-Rangers defender Gordon Petric didn't receive international clearance in time. Yeah, he's used 3-5-2 at uh, times, Jim Jeffries, 4-4-2, but it looks tonight as if it's going to be a straightforward 4-3-3 formation. They'll certainly miss the suspended Colin Cameron and his ability to get forward, because if you look at that midfield, Severin and Jackson, Fulton, all happier, I think, with the game in front of them. And in that sense, I think they're going to have to look for an awful lot out of Juanjo tonight. I don't think there's any point in playing him unless they're going to get as much of the ball as possible into his feet and getting him, get him running onto Scott McKillop. Well, Dundee United begin life without Billy Dodds after his move to Rangers. 18-year-old Stephen McConnellog takes his place. David Hanna is suspended, so there's a first league start for Greek midfielder Astanisos Benitez. Scott McCulloch has recovered from a groin injury. Hugh Davidson drops to the bench. This is a really young side, David. Yeah, and I'm the Anorak who's uh, daft enough to have worked out the average age as well. In the average age of this side, just 23. Paul Stark believes it may be the youngest side uh, ever to have taken uh, the field in the Premier League. I think if you look at the front two, Stephen Thompson at just 21, McConnell at just 18. Thompson we know of, I think he's shown Sky Viewers enough uh, this season to suggest he's a real chance in the game. McConnell, I remember from watching in the Victory Shield a couple of seasons ago, again Paul Stirrup um, has high hopes for this young lad, but he did say to me when he arrived at the ground, he'd rather have kept his partnership uh, for another 18 months or so. His hand has been forced by the Billy Dodge transfer, he's about to find out just how good these youngsters are tonight. Well, a bad weather weekend in Scotland, claimed some games, but under soil heating here at Tynecastle has ensured that the surface is just about more suited to Hearts and Dundee United than it is to Torben and Dean. Tynecastle prepares to welcome the two teams. Hearts stuck in a rut at the moment without a win in seven league games. In fact, their last success came against Dundee United at Tannadice at the end of September. Gary 
against Wigan's fine form this season led to an appearance on the international stage at the age of 29. Definitely a case of better late than never. With 16 goals in his last 24 games, but Swiggins in the mood to see off his former club. Another ex-Dundee United man who's been impressive lately is Stephen Presley. A consistent performer in an inconsistent season for Hearts has talked that he might get a call from his country soon. One of the more promising recent arrivals at Dundee United is Jan Telesnikov, chiefly a playmaker, but he's also weighed in with some great goals. The Israeli international looks a class act. Hugh Dallas is in charge of this one. He's also been handed the old firm derby, incidentally, at Christmas at Celtic Park. And tomorrow, he flies out to Germany to take charge of Bayern Munich's Champions League clash with Dynamo Kiev. It will be Hearts to get us up and running. They are very much out of form. Dundee United in form, but the recent history of this fixture favours the Jambos. They've only lost two of their last 26 Tyne Castle tussles with United. The way it's been going for Hearts lately, a victory today would be almost as big an achievement as keeping 11 players on the field. They've had a man sent off in each of their last three games, and of course, they've conceded last-minute goals in those games. And the United have put the misfortunes of last season well and truly behind them, they finished second from bottom then. Difficult to work out which way this game might go actually, David. Yeah, I mean, it's just, uh, I'm so struck with the contrast in terms of the front players, though, Ian. It's Stefan Adam back in the side tonight, along with Gary McSweegan. Could hardly get a more experienced or potent partnership than that. And then you look at United with young McConnell Logan Thompson up front. It's a big test for them. Gary Naismith immediately called into action to hook that one away. DeVos won the header, but here's Darren Jackson. And a rather late challenge on Benitez. I think he thought he should have had a free kick. And Stanios Benitez. His first league start for Dundee United. to fill Billy Dodds' boots today, and that's not going to be an easy task for the teenager. His second league start of the season, played against Aberdeen recently. We kept going against Naismith. Taken for Dundee United by the Canadian international Jason DeVos. Away by Presley, only to Telesnikov though, scored a real stunner against St Johnston last week. His fourth goal for Dundee United. Tim Jeffrey's side looking for their first win in eight league matches. He's due a break here, that's the thing. I know that uh, feels he's due a break. Looking here at uh, Paul Sturrock, very, very young side he's put out tonight, but uh, I think it's typical of Paul Sturrock that he's prepared to do that. Severin, he was definitely caught late by Telesnikov. Yeah, crunching challenge there from Telesnikov, who does most of his damage at the other end of the pitch, but uh, prepared to do the shift working back there. sent in by Murray, it hung a little bit, McSwiggan flicked it on, Severin, back to Naismith, it's going to drop behind that. It's Grant Murray that hangs this up, I think DeVos thinks that uh, Alan Combe is coming for this and he, he did and then changed his mind. It's a lack of communication there at uh, the back for Dundee United. Motherwell in the quarterfinals of the CIS Insurance Cup and will now face Aberdeen in the semi-finals. Hearts tie at Kilmarnock was postponed. The eventual winners will meet Celtic. Hearts on the prowl. Juanjo setting up Stefan Adam. 
This is promising. And it's just going to go in from Juanjo. What a start for Hearts. And the boy from Barcelona is an early hero at Tynecastle. Well, he's the last man you'd expect to, to score with a header here. Juanjo started the move, releasing a dam on the left. A dam had time to look up and pick him out. And he gets plenty of power in that, 12 yards out, but he still gets enough on it to direct it away from Alan Combe, who's scrambling across to his right-hand post, just can't get there. And just the start that Jim Jeffries would have wanted, a fine pullback here from Stefan Adam. And that's a tremendous header there from Wanjo. Well, that will give Hearts a huge lift. Wanjo scoring his second goal of the season. His first came against Kilmarnock here in October. Incidentally, it came in injury time in that game, but Kilmarnock still managed to grab an equaliser. Hearts have certainly fallen victim to a few last-minute goals this season. They've got a free kick now, though. Yeah, it's needless to have Jason DeVos, Jason DeVos in through uh, Gary McSwigan, and he's given away a free kick in a very dangerous area here. Sorting out his wall. Panjo and Jackson standing over it. Panjo making only his second start for Hearts. He's been a serial sub since joining them. Panjo! Oh, it came off the wall. Corner. Well, you can see what he was attempting there, just to bend it and dip it over the wall there. Try and beat uh, Alan Combe to his right. Well did his job. A good start here from Hearts. And this exciting young Spaniard will take the corner. Presley gives it back to Juanjo. Fulton's pass is going to go wayward. Juanjo actually played under Bobby Robson in his Barcelona days. Tremendous header this was. It's a good pullback from Stefan Adam. But it's still going to take a special header to score from there. He's 12 yards out and he gets enough on it to do the job. And delighted Jim Jeffries might just feel his luck is turning at last. No problems in the early stages of this game for Hearts, but they have had problems in the later stages of recent games. David Partridge, former West Ham youngster, floats this one up. It eluded Stephen Thompson. 21 years of age. Actually sent off against Hearts last season. It's the second meeting between these teams this season. Hearts won the first 2 0. Stefan Adam scoring both goals. And they always seem to do pretty well against their opponents today. So it's going to form at the moment after that early goal from Juanjo. Naismith's throw. Away by DeVos, back by Naismith, away by DeVos again. Gary McSwigan. Wanjo, there's a bit of a buzz around Tynecastle now when he gets the ball. And Grant Murray gets the corner. And yeah, McCullough did well, but it was a superb supporting run there from Grant Murray on the right-hand side. Normally used as a man marker at times by Jim Jeffries, but playing that right-back uh, role tonight, I think we'll see him getting forward as often as he possibly can. So they jostle for position as the corner comes in from Fulton. Away by DeVos. Jackson making himself available. Fulton. Thompson inadvertently giving it back to Fulton. Here's Paul Ritchie. And two boos from the 
at Tynecastle. His future a little uncertain at the moment, but not likely to be here at Tynecastle, that's for sure. Scott Severin with a rather dismal effort that time. Goal kick. Tim Jeffries seeking a quick improvement in Hearts League form. This time, last year, they embarked on a run of 12 league matches without a win. They're already up to seven this season. Grant Murray showed a little too much of it to McConnellock, but he gets the throw. Hearts currently seventh in the table. A victory here would take them up to fifth above Dundee and above their City rivals, Hibs, on goal difference. <laughs> Stephen Presley has been solid as a rock in the back line for Hearts this season. Up against his former club today. That one's gone out of play. It'll be a Hearts throw for Gary Naismith to take. just outside of him but Murray sends in a very early cross and the flag was up for offside yeah the final ball there from Grant Murray who got himself into a good position once again here he's looking to drop one in for Gary McSweegan there but uh, over hit it stands with McConnellog lurking Jan Telesnikov McConnellog Telesnikov quickly crowded out and no surprise the flags up for offside against young Stephen McConnellog well I don't know about this I think he's onside there Paul Ritchie, I think, who's trying to get out there, number six. I think McConnell was onside there. And give this youngster a sniff at goal here, Ian, and he's liable to punish it. Dundee United could move within three points of second place Celtic and within four of leaders Rangers if they turn things round here and triumph at Tyne Castle tonight. It's been a good season so far for Paul Stewart that he's reassessed and rebuilt the playing staff, really. This is Benitez. And he might just get the corner, although Murray doing his best to get there. And he didn't stop it going. It will be a corner. Now, interestingly enough, Hearts have watched on the United in their last couple of games and they didn't get a corner in either game, would you believe? So they won't know what to expect here. And the corner went all the way through to McConnellog, who claimed handball. It was quickly booted away. There was no time to back up their claim. Benitez here is onside. McConnellog in the middle. Benitez. Oh, and it's going to be a corner. Should have played it earlier. Great chance to put McConnell again at the front post there, Vinitas, and just uh, took the touch when he should have played it earlier. Good ball to release him wide right. McConnell wants it early there. Vinitas decides to take the touch, and eventually McConnell is squeezed out at the front post. Mackenzie punching clear the corner from Teleznikov. David Wirral, and the United picked him up from Blackburn towards the end of last season. Wirral. Rather a 
seamless that from Easton, although having said that, McCulloch is trying to make the best of it, and he took out Grant Murray. That'll be a free kick. Yeah, good play here by Grant Murray. Just gets across the front of Scott McCulloch and, and was caught late. Well, there were claims for a penalty here. Roddy McKenzie misjudged this completely. McConnell with the knockdown, and it did appear to come off the, the thigh there. McSwiggan, Stefan Adam takes it over. Here's Craig Easton. And a hurried clearance from Wirral because of the presence of McSwiggan. Naismith closed down by McConnellog. They've only managed one win in their last nine encounters with Hearts. That came here last season. Billy Dodds got the winner. Offside against McConnell, his replacement this evening. Well, you can see he plays right on the shoulder of the last defender, Stephen McConnell, and he's certainly maybe half a yard offside here. Stirrick side trailing to Juan Joe's early header. Jackson is going to pick this up. And Swiggin. Now Scott Severin. Murray. Oops, misunderstanding between. Juanjo and Murray results in a Dundee United throw. Yeah, Juanjo wanted it long there. And I think they have to get the ball into his feet as often as possible. There are those who will tell you that Juanjo's a luxury, but if you do get the ball into his feet often enough and let him take part in the game, he'll do your turn. Partridge. Up towards McConnell, but you'd fancy... Presley to win that. And Murray very calm and composed. Naismith giving McSwiggan something to chase and he's going to get to it as well. <laughs> Typical of Gary McSwiggan though, never one to give up. They'll take this throw. Nay Smith. Booted away by Jason DeVos. Signed from Darlington just over a year ago. One by Fulton for Stefan Adam. Pasquale is the man who's on him. That was a neat pass to Fulton, who drilled it across the face of goal. Yeah, just dragged it away there, but it's good play. It was uh, Steve Fulton who put the dam in in the first place. The dam decided to pick him out here. Fulton, good left foot shot, just drags it across the face of the goal. Gary McSwigan, in fact, who played Steve Fulton in. Severin's header. Helped on by McSwiggan. A side flag going up again against McConnell. And I'm sure we'll <laughs> see that flag a few times as he tries to spring the trap. Well, it only takes one in, that's all it takes. And this youngster, a lot of assurance about him for an 18 year old. I can have watched him in the Victory Shield a few seasons ago. A real talent. I think Paul Sturrock would have preferred to give him more time in the, the under 21 side, but uh, his hand has been forced. Juanjo, scorer of Hart's goal. And Wirral, rather awkwardly back to Dunco. And Steve Fulton, rather winded by that, I think. Meantime, the United sharing a little sympathy. Easton, and 
Martin Tavesnikov, to his credit, has picked it up. Steve Fulton needing a little bit of treatment, and... This is why. Yeah, he took this films from David Well full on. It can be pretty painful. <laughs> the funny side too. Willie Young, the fourth official, chatting to Jim Jeffries and his assistant Billy Brown. I don't think Steve Fulton saw the uh, music no, side of it. I doubt it. <laughs> I think he's still feeling it. business McCulloch challenging with Murray Thompson picked away by Severin but McCulloch gets there first rather wayward header though picked up by Stefan and Dam Fulton oh that was almost a lovely delivery by Fulton although the flag was up anyway yeah, I think McSweeney was away a fraction early here. Well, not a lot in it at all. Get away! Get away! Telesnikov first to that. John, hey! It's a really useful player. The Israeli international. McCulloch has conceded a free kick after tangling and tussling with Wanjo. Yeah, pretty clear cut that. Scott McCulloch can have no complaints. But I'm surprised that Hearts haven't managed to get Wanjo on the ball a bit more often. I mean, he made a tremendous impact in the game earlier. He's hardly had a kick since. He broke into Barcelona's first team when Bobby Robson was in charge at the new Camp. Never really fulfilled the potential they thought he had, though, and they released him last year. He found his way from Barcelona to Edinburgh. As you do. Naismith. Richie. Darren Jackson. Fulton. He was looking for Juan Joe. Bit too much on that one, though. Yeah, I think it was the right ball. I think Wanjo came short for it into feet. Steve Fulton playing some of the best football of his Tynecastle career at the moment. And a major dip in form last season, but it's come storming back this year. Murray. Wanjo. Adam. Now they've got it to Juanjo, who was looking for Squigget. They raced away from him and through to Alan Cobb. They did level in terms of possession, but Hearts have made the, the vital breakthrough, and United really haven't started yet. I just wonder how much the departure of Billy Dodds has affected that dressing room. Hey! Juanjo. Pasquale's header. Stefan Adam chasing it though. And well done Scott McCulloch. Although Adam wasn't giving up that easily and the free kick goes in the Frenchman's favour. Yeah, typical persistence here from Stefan Adam. Always prepared to chase the lost causes. And they're both at it here, but eventually, clearly a trip here by Scott McCulloch. He didn't know a great deal about it to be fair to him, but this one has a free kick in a good position once again. for Fulton's left foot to create something here for Hearts. It's a decent delivery as well, and Severin was in there, magnificent clearing header by Whirl. Swigan, Fulton. Here's the 
Here's Fulton. And Gary Naismith is going to have a go, and he caught it really cleanly, but it was smothered by Alan Coe. Yeah, it's a good strike from Gary Naismith. Quite happy to take this one first time. And there's a fair bit of power in it as well. Straight at uh, Combe, though, who dealt with it well. Wirral. Oh, um, through to Partridge. Now the offside flag has gone up again against Dundee United. Well, this is what you call defending here from David Wirral. That's a magnificent defensive header here. Under real pressure at the back post from Scott Severin. And managed to get it away. Stephen Presley with this Hearts free kick. Naismith's header. And McSwiggan on the turn. Oh, it nearly caught out. Alan Cohn. That's a decent save. I think that's finding the inside of the, the left-hand post there. And look how quickly Gary McSwiggan takes that. I think that was creeping in there. That's a fine save from Alan Cohn. Reacted well, moved his feet quickly. Got his body across. defence will be under pressure again here as Juanjo's corner comes in but it's a comfortable catch that time a lot easier than the excellent save that forced the corner Fulton Adam Pasquale though mopping up slammed to the stands by ever present this season. Paul Ritchie. Naismith. Swigan losing out. This is Pasquale. Craig Easton. Scottish under-21 international. Scott McCulloch. Offside again. Referee has played the advantage though. Although it didn't turn into much of an advantage for Hearts. McCullough steaming back into their half and a rare mistake from Presley has given him the chance to deliver here. Easy catch though for Roddy McKenzie. Third today to Gio Russo. Yeah, I think he tries to pick out McConnell at the front post here. The mistake from Stephen Presley gave McCullough possession. McConnell attacks the front post, the, the cross just a, a bit too deep for him. Two players go side of him, left for dead here. Tremendous turn. And again, looking to get the shot away as well. The man bang on form right now, Gary McSwiggan. Great goal scoring record as well in recent times. And facing his former club today is Richie. Severin to Murray. A dam down the line. Bernard Pasquale read that one. He's been a consistent performer since his arrival from Le Havre. Juanjo. He's turning now. Bolton. Gary Naismith. Gary McSwiggan making himself available. Threading it through to Severin. Hearts making patient progress. Wanja. He's got his cross in and affected by Cole. That's a good catch by Alan Cole, but I think Paul Sturrock will want his 
his back line pushed further up the pitch, defending right on top of their goalkeeper right now. Thompson. Away by Naismith, who, as he cleared it, seemed to catch Benitez, who's down at the moment. And he stayed down, in fact. You can see him with Dundee United break. Well, he was just running back Benitez. The flag is up for offside, but the referee again has let it go. His heart's had it, and they're on the attack. Stevie Fulton. Naismith. McSwiggan. Fulton. Murray. Hearts toying with Dundee United at the moment. Juanjo. Gets it back from Fulton. Juanjo. It still might come through to Adam. It does. And Tedesnikov stopped the supply to Severin. And now Stephen Thompson breaking, but Stephen Presley covering. Yeah, just too many bodies, goal side here for Juanjo to find his way through. But I think they really have to, to persevere and try and get the ball onto his feet as often as possible. Stephen Thompson. Another Dundee United throw. Deleznikov. McCullough. Free kick. So they'll wait for this one to come in from Easton. And oh! It was while the flag was. Uh, the referee has spotted a bit of shoving actually in the box. Yeah, it's a good free kick taken by Craig Easton, whipped in front post. Then you see McConnell log in there, looking for a chance. Hearts remember without a win in the league since they beat Dundee United at the end of September. And they do know that it's really time to deliver. So far today, they are delivering. Tereznikov and Juanjo together then. Spain against Israel. So a free kick for Fulton. And that normally guarantees a decent delivery. Which is probably put the kiss of death on it. It's not bad actually, Richie in there. chasing but Partridge saw it coming and the United have already won eight games this season last season they only won eight throughout the whole of the campaign so it's a real sign of a dramatic upturn in fortune for them big improvement and to Lesnikov I think he's going to be booked for this. Grant Murray first to the ball there. And it's just kind of ticking off in the end. Credit to Murray, actually, who got up straight yeah. away and wasn't too bothered by it. Presley's free kick. with Partridge finding his keeper. They're going to be forced into a change shortly. Scott McCulloch is struggling. Only just uh, come back, actually, from a groin injury. Wirral. Away by Venetis. Telesnikov. Fulton says, that's mine. Now Juanjo. 
McSwigan. Stepping it down was the man he was looking for. And there wasn't a bad ball at all there. In behind Bernard Pasquale. He's threaded it through there. Overhit slightly, but uh, not a bad effort at all. Smith with his throw. Naismith underneath that one. Not that he could deal with it particularly well. It was an open one. Throw in though. The substitution is going to be made now, and it's going to be Tony Smith coming on. Scott McCullough, presumably with a reoccurrence of that groin problem. And Tony Smith makes only his second appearance after his move from Airdrie. David Partridge. Thompson had peeled away. Couldn't keep it in though. <laughs> Easton. And he's uh, almost fallen over the ball. Reminder of our Monday night action this week. Hmm, that could be interesting. A tasty London derby, Tottenham against West Ham from White Hart Lane, Monday at 7 on Sky Sports 1, and of course there's interactive coverage on Sky Sports Extra, for Sky Digital viewers, a unique way to watch the game. Some game it should be. From Tottenham back to Tynecastle, and a free kick for Dundee United. DeVos. by Naismith, Jackson. That was always a chance for Thompson to capitalise. Pasquale took that one out. been ensconced in third place in the Scottish Premier League since August and they're currently 10 points ahead of Hearts who I'm sure would have considered themselves serious challengers for that third place when the season began. Third place being realistically the best these teams can hope for of course with the old firm set to stamp their mark on the top two places. Challenge on McSwigan, but Steve Dallas is in a pretty good position for that. And there wasn't much of a shout anyway. David Wirral, former Blackburn boy. McConnellog. No one in the middle for Dundee United. It's a good run off from the youngster McConnellog here, filling off right hand side. Nobody attacking the front post, and he really hasn't had much to work with at all tonight, Stephen McConnell. It's a huge kick from McKenzie. Severin took it on his chest, but it was away by DeVos. Grant Murray. Unable to make contact. This is David Wirral. Benitez, Telesnikov. Oh, 
Selesnikov planting one through the middle, looking for Stephen Thompson, but it carried through to Roddy McKenzie. Chiu Ruse is available again after suspension, but he's been left on the bench today. McKenzie given another chance. He's certainly kickable. It's dropped to Adam. Selesnikov leading this Dundee United charge, trying to wrestle Fulton out of the way. Smith the substitute. Trying to tease Grant Murray, and in the end, he sent it straight into the stand. Yeah, it's a poor delivery here from Tony Smith. But I think United have to try and get more width. They've put very little from either side of the pitch at all. And that's why it's uh, been such a hard shift for the two youngsters up front. They've had nothing to feed off at all so far. Hearts actually seeking their fourth successive victory over Dundee United. Confirmation, by the way, that Scott McCulloch went off with a reoccurrence of that groin problem that had kept him out of the side. Freshly tidying up on a firm back pass to McKenzie. Severin. Banjo tripped by Easton. Yeah, Hugh Dallas well up with the play there. And once again, I don't think Craig Easton can have many complaints. Murray's free kick, Naismith. Popped up in the box, but it dribbles behind rather miserably for a goal kick. Gary Naismith, one of the promising youngsters at Haas. In fact, five of the team today products of the youth scheme here at Hearts and some tremendous young talent amongst them too. Paul Sturrock of Dundee United also relying on youngsters as David mentioned earlier the average age of his team today just around the 23 mark. Teleznikov <laughs> David Worrell. And the Israeli making himself available again, but a slip from McConnellock, and it dribbles through to McKenzie. McConnellock just 18 years of age, given an outing tonight after the sale of Billy Dodds to Rangers. Clearance up towards McConnellog, but met by a Ritchie. Hearts finished sixth last season, unable really to follow their success of the previous campaign when they won the Scottish Cup, their first trophy for 36 years. And of course, Jim Jeffries' side that season also pushed the old firm all the way in the title race. Not been much to shout about since. Jackson. Naismith. Encouraging run. Likewise from Stefan Adam. Stefan Adam has been left out of the side in recent games. Not really been in form. A point that he himself freely admitted. There will be one minute of added on time in this first half. Yeah, I think Paul Sturrock will have plenty to say in that dressing room as well, and it's been a disappointing uh, United performance. I think they have to get the ball forward quicker at times. The, the two lads up front like the ball in behind, they like it early, but the service really has been poor from the, the midfield tonight. Too fierce, although having said that, 
Juan Joe does get there. He has Tony Smith to contend with. Doesn't contend with him particularly well. Break on here. The poor Sturrock side. Lesnikov involved, of course. Here's Wirral. Benitez. He's got the corner off Paul Ritchie in the last minute of the first half. Corner will be taken by Teleznikov. Their third of the game. Teleznikov delivers. And it's awkward for Hearts here. Mackenzie at full stretch. Got there in the end. Yeah, it's a good corner that's booked in. Roddy Mackenzie's not getting there here. And eventually Hearts managed to scramble it away, but it's a good ball in. United have a decent away record this season, only lost two of their seven games on the road, but things hardly going according to plan here so far. Juanjo's cross, Stefan Adam is in there, DeVos did well to steer it away. Stevie Fulton. Naismith. with him and just tickled it off his toes. Naismith and Adam unable to do much with it. It's half time at Tynecastle. Hearts without a win in seven league games took an early lead from the young Spaniard Juanjo header as well which sneaked in the corner but it wasn't really a sign of things to come in this game that's been the only goal of the game so far Dundee United disappointing and at half time at Tyne Castle it's Hearts who lead by one goal to nil It's crunch time for England's three UEFA Cup representatives on Thursday night and you can follow the fortunes of all three on Sky Sports. You can choose to watch Newcastle against Roma, Leeds against Spartak Moscow and Nantes against Arsenal in their third round second leg ties from 6.45 on Sky Sports News. Well, our live match from Scotland tonight comes from the capital, Edinburgh and Tynecastle Stadium, which as you can see is not far from Edinburgh Castle. And at Tyne Castle right now, it's the halfway stage in our live match, and it's Hearts 1, Dundee United 0. The man from Spain, young Juanjo, got the goal, but just eight attempts on goal all night. We want more. So just one goal, but no bookings. Mm, that's good. But Hearts have been well and truly in the driving seat in the first half. Having said that, they're only one goal to the good. So it's 1-0 Hearts. Charlie, it begs the question, already, how badly did Dundee United miss Billy Dodds? Well, I think it does take time in maybe improving the evidence, but I think in the first 45 minutes, I have to say, I, I like the look of Thompson, and I do like the look of McConnell Logan, particularly only 18 years of age. But you're asking a great deal. Thompson's learned through experience with playing with Billy Dodds. He's a link man. He holds it up. He does his work. He works for the team. But there's no one holding it up. Those two like to run in behind defenders and at the angles. They ain't getting that supply tonight because the midfield's been disappointing. It's been a disappointing game in both teams. I mean, we got a, a lovely start with a Wanjo goal in four minutes. But in saying that, the passing's been poor. But I think Jim Jeffries can probably look at the goal. Wanjo picks up. I mean, it's a bad mistake from United in midfield. No one comes to meet him. It's a simple pass. But credit to Stefan Adam. He picks out Wanjo, the smallest player on the pitch. And not only does he get the run right, he's picked out well. A bit like... Arsenal say third goal at the weekend against Leicester. It's a wonderful header. Little fella, not not challenged, not uh, you know, no one competing there. 
puts the pace on the header, and it's a wonderful finish. And I really did think then that we're ready to get a good attacking match. Hearts would have been lifted by that, but it's been very scrappy. We heard when he joined Hearts, uh, Charlie, that Wanjo was indeed a player, and then he had a loan spell. Now he's come back to Town Castle. That's probably done him a bit good, hasn't it? Well, I think it has. It seems as if his, his time was at an end at Hearts. And I think the way the Hearts are playing tonight with the three up front, he's getting a lot of freedom in terms of he gets his supply. Davey's been saying he needs more of it. But I think when he gets it, he's been dwelling on it a little bit. He's got to move it. The Continentals tend to come to our game, and instead of taking the control and stopping the ball, they move the ball, so they're always on the move. He hasn't done that tonight enough. I think if he gets people moving and the mobility to change the angle of the pass, then things will happen for Hearts. I've got to be a bit more patient than normal. But today in United have got to ask themselves questions. I've got to start getting the ball in midfield and passing it and giving the strikers a chance. Well, the only other real goal threat, Charlie, came from Gary McSwagan of Hearts. Now, we want to see more from him, don't we? We want to see more from everybody. It's not been good enough. He is, uh, he is a guy who likes to take it early. On this occasion, he does. It's a fairly easy and comfortable save for Coleman in the end. But at least you're asking questions. We've had four shots in target. And for these two teams, Hearts who want to force the issue that they are the third best in Scotland, and the Dundee United are currently in that position, and having sold the odds, there'll be questions asked about that. The four in target is simply not good enough. It's hard to believe that United are where they are in third place in the league right now. No, it's not hard to believe that, Jim, because before it's been merited. And tonight's evidence, it's not. I mean, you can look at that team and they're needing inspiration from someone. Dodds isn't there. They've got to get it from somewhere. And I don't know if you can rely too much on the younger players. It's asking too much of them. So it's Paul Sturrock I've got to ask for. Telesnikov in particular, to get on the ball and give them supply. Let's hope so. Well, so at Tyne Castle, just one goal separates Hearts and Dundee United. And that youngster's happy because it's for Hearts. Hearts one up, thanks to Juanjo. The second half coming up after this. The Monday Night Football comes from White Hart Lane. Tottenham against West Ham is live on Sky Sports 1 and interactive on Sky Sports Extra from 7 o'clock. Here at Tyne Castle, it's our live Sunday night match from Scotland. Hearts one up on Dundee United. The second half coming up now, let's rejoin David Proven and Ian Crocker. Cheers, Jim, and it's Dundee United in their white shirts who will start the second half here at Tyne Castle, trailing by a goal to nil. hoping to stop the rot and victory here would be their first in eight league encounters Stephen Thompson trying his best to latch on to that though just screwed away from him by Paul Ritchie now Gary Naismith Came off. Naismith last so it'll be Dundee United's throw O'Connorlock he's done well the youngster and it might come through to Tony Smith. And, oh, McKenzie came out and didn't get there. And then it was slammed into the side netting by McConnellog. Well, he started the move in the first place and he almost finished it off here. Good play by McConnellog to get the cross in. He's making his way to the back post right at this moment here. He just can't squeeze it in. The angle's too tight. Stephen Thompson wants it squared. If he does get it squared, there's a tap in here. He's only a yard out. And he just can't pull the ball back. First real chance of the match for United, and Paul Sturrock knows it. Well, Hearts got off to a flyer in the first half with Juanjo's goal. Stephen McConnellog not quite able to get Dundee United off to a flyer in the second half. Jackson. Severin, beavering away, and finding Darren Jackson. Stephen Thompson. Craig Easton. Some run from Wirral. Here's Telesnikov. He expected Thompson to be a little bit further ahead of him, rather than right next to him. <laughs> Max 
Swiggin holds it on. Away by Tony Smith. Easton. And a foul by Ritchie on McConnellock. Here is McConnellock with Wirral nearby. He's going to get a cross in too, but it was met by Scott Severin. Smith snapped in to Hearts, and he's away here. This is some run. Great run from Gary Naismith. And, oh, just taken away by Partridge. With McSwiggan and Adam waiting. Juanjo's cross. McSwiggan in there, but not able to manage an attempt on goal, and the offside flag will go up against Thompson. A terrific break there from Gary Naismith decided to take the initiative on his own down the left side and he runs 60 70 yards here it's not a bad delivery at all into the, the middle at the end of it all Partridge did enough to get it away Presley's free kick Adam back it goes to Presley now Grant Murray Wanjo just held back Tony Smith. Which is goal that separates the sides at the moment here, though. Stephen Presley. Adam. Fanjo. Settles for the throw of David Partridge. Knocked on by Adam. Away by Bernard Pasquale. And it'll be another throw in. Two hearts. Jackson Severin's header away by Smith Fulton and it drops for Juanjo Fulton ensuring that Teleznikov couldn't make much progress quick throw though finds Craig Easton Hart's not too alert to that Whirl. Benitez pointed to where he wanted it, but it hit Ritchie on its way in. It does come in eventually, and brave goalkeeper from McKenzie with a high boot from Thompson. Yeah, starting to get uh, more words now down the right side in particular, Bundy United. As the ball comes in here, Ronnie McKenzie wasn't completely convincing. There's been a better start to the second half. United had men over there on the right hand side. Indeed, a bright start to the half. After a fairly dismal first half. Richie. Free kick in favour of Hearts. Swigging amongst those waiting for this delivery from Gary Naismith. Yeah. Comes to nothing though, might come to something for Dundee United. Whirl. McConnellock chasing, but Presley is there. Didn't look too sure of his footing initially. Yeah. 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 Paul 
Petri. Sent it out of touch. Went down to have a chat with Derby County this week, Richie, about a possible move, but didn't materialise. He'll be on his way eventually, though. To where it remains to be seen. Rangers certainly a good bet north of the border, but Premiership interest too. And the Scotland defender who played in the first leg of the Euro 2000 playoff at Hampden, marking David Beckham. Venetis. Thompson. Thompson heading for the byline, got his cross in, and good defending from Presley. Yeah, Thompson, Stephen Thompson's taking a sore one. He did well to get the cross in under pressure from Grant Murray. And so did Stephen Presley because McConnell was attacking the front post area. You can see the, the trip there. Thompson off the field getting treatment. Craig Easton ready to send this corner in as Dundee United go in search of an equaliser. Mackenzie flapped a little bit. Smuggled away by Presley. Poor touch from Swiggin giving possession back to Dundee United. Not that they can hang on for it for long. In fact, no one can hang on for it for very long at the moment. Chasing, but I don't think. Well, he did get there. He proved me wrong, even though he's ended up with the keeper and Cope. Jason DeVos now, the big Canadian, up towards the little man McConnellog. Richie has this under control. A hint of anxiety about the pass back to Roddy McKenzie. Juanjo. Oh dear. Straight through the keeper. Yeah, <coughs> poor ball there. And Sweden was well positioned in the inside left channel for the ball over the top, but uh, the delivery wasn't good enough. He's gone very, very scrappy now. Severin managed to smuggle it through to McSwigan. Adam. Anjo took his half the ball. Here's Grant Murray. Oh, it's a lovely pass from Murray to Juanjo. There weren't many to aim at in the box. Here's Severin, now Naismith. Jackson. Fulton. Still Fulton. Might come through to McSwigan. Away by Pasquale, but Hearts are putting a bit of pressure on here. Cut out though by Jason DeVos. A little spell all started with a wonderful pass from Murray, and Hearts are still having a go. challenge will result in a free kick to Dundee United no yellow card shown yet yeah shake of the hand there but he, he certainly caught him late there Smith not a bad delivery but it was steered away by Paul Ritchie trying to spark Dundee United into life as they try and haul themselves level here but never really had much chance of getting the cross in it was cut out by Fulton might be able to do something here though and now it's rich it's put away by Richie some of the passing has been woeful in this game yeah it's a poor final ball again Neither set of strikers have had much to feed off at all tonight, to be fair. 
Here's Craig Easton. Thompson, oh, he skipped away from Murray then, and that is going to be the first yellow card of the game for Grant Murray. Yeah, just mistimed it completely. You can have no complaints at all about the booking. Thompson just too quick for him there. Footwork is too clever for Grant Murray. Well, Murray sees yellow. Dundee United see an opportunity here. Craig Easton standing over the free kick. In it comes from Easton. And McKenzie had to scramble across to get on the end of that one. Yeah, a lot of bodies in there, challenging for this one. And Rory McKenzie's angles were perfect there, gets across well there. Stephen Thompson with the header. And McKenzie was across quickly. Another huge kick from McKenzie. Almost dropped for Stefan Adam. have dominated this fixture in recent times winning 13 of the last 17 clashes with Dundee United here at Tynecastle and Jim Jeffries will be hoping that that remarkable record continues yeah, just want three points tonight and after the, the lack of good fortune he's had recently I don't think he'll bother too much about the performance tonight as long as he gets the points the McConnell logs header will be collected by McKenzie but uh, Jim will be a little anxious if it stays this way with a slender 1-0 lead in the closing minutes because in the last three games they've let in last-minute goals. So he's not the most controlled person I've ever seen on a touchline, but in the last minutes it uh, could be interesting to watch him. Jason DeVos. Thompson's little flick. Presley has it. Gives it straight back to DeVos. And no flag against McConnellock. He's beaten that offside trap. McConnellock's cross away by Murray. And Hart survive. Booted away by Naismith. Swiggin down for Adam. Adam's going to have a burst towards goal here. He finds Darren Jackson. And it was Fulton in the end. It's safe by the keeper. He had more time than he thought here, Ian. Could have taken a touch here. Delightful play. Great exchange here. It's Darren Jackson who plays Steve Fulton in. And he had plenty of time to take a touch and measure the shot. Second appearance for Hearts. So often the backup to Gilles Rousset, but keeping the giant Frenchman on the bench today. Away by Wurl. Out of play off Naismith. This compact Tynecastle Stadium should really be a fortress for Hearts, but. They've only won four of their last 16 games here. I mean, it's a pretty poor record on their own patch. Telesnikov. Releasing Tony Smith, who skips past Murray. And Smith's cross to Thompson! Oh, it's off the post, but here's Smith! Oh, he's put it wide! Dear, oh dear, oh dear. Desperately unlucky, Dundee United. Tremendous play from Tony Smith in the first place. Inside Grant Murray, picks out Stephen Thompson. Had a choice to either pull it back or have the shot. The shot comes back off the post and the chance is lost. But far better, more direct play from Dundee United. Stephen Thompson trying to squeeze it in at the near post. And he's just a couple of inches out. And that has to
has to give United a bit of hope. and DeVos. Well, United's best chance so far, all started and created by Tony Smith. That's a wonderful ball in the, into the path of Stephen Thompson. And he's just off target. through that early goal from Quanzhou. Gary McSwiggan's going to make way for the arrival of Gary Wales, a summer signing from Hamilton Aggies. You might remember him actually playing against Rangers in the Scottish Cup last season. Gary Wales is on in place of Gary McSwiggan. <laughs> Wales just 20 years of age, very much one for the future. His sixth substitute appearance, adding to a couple of starts for Hearts. Darren Jackson. Then challenge from DeVos. I'm surprised that Hugh Dallas let that one go in, to be honest with you. He was certainly close enough. Jason DeVos coming. Break through Stefan Adam there. challenge and Hugh Dallas is going to take delayed action by giving Jason DeVos a yellow card yeah he allowed the advantage it's certainly worth a booking and that is a bad challenge it's exactly what FIFA have been the challenge that FIFA have been trying to, to outlaw well it's one all on bookings DeVos and Dundee United were quite likely to be the same way on goals, ASAP. Adam OK to continue. This stage last season. Dundee United have almost doubled the number of points they had at this stage last season, which shows their improvement. It's going the way of the Jambos. Although maybe not for long if Dundee United can do something here. Smith, Easton. Smith. Partridge. And the offside flag will go up against McConnell. It really took a while going up, I have to say. The assistant uh, had a good look at this before he raised the flag. And I think he's onside. I think it lost his level. And once again, young McConnellog is on the wrong end of a an offside decision. That's a few tonight. A couple of unlucky calls. McConnellog. Benitez looking to latch onto it, and they will get a corner. It's 
the impression the tide is starting to turn in this game. I think there's a bit more belief about uh, United now. Well, we're midway through the second half. The big men are up from the back, DeVos and Partridge. So Lesnikov's corner, good punch by McKenzie. Comes to Wirral, who steers it back to Telesnikov. Easton, saved by McKenzie. Partridge to try again. McConnellog, Easton got a little touch on it then, but again it doesn't happen for Dundee United. It might happen here for Hart. Adam's got Wales to his left, Jackson to his right. He elects to find Darren Jackson. Lovely chip! Oh, yes! A glorious goal from Darren Jackson! Hearts are stopping the rock here, heading for their first win in eight league games. Well, the game's been screaming out for something to light it up, and Darren Jackson has just provided it. How about that for technique and composure? And he made up 60 yards to provide Stefan Adam with the option of the pass in the first place. The quick look up. And the lob is executed to perfection. Wonderful goal from Darren Jackson. And no more than he deserved given the ground that he made up as Hart started to break up field. Alan Coombe knew from the minute it left Darren Jackson's boot that he was in no man's land there. Jackson's fourth of the season coming against his former club. Scored a good few goals in his Dundee United days. But that one has just about seen them off, I would suspect, here at Tynecastle. Telesnikov. Time for Dundee United to gamble now. And they're going to bring on their giant Portuguese striker, Joachim Ferraz, shortly. <laughs> that was a late challenge from Presley on McConnellog, which is going to bring a yellow card. He's learning the hard way tonight, young McConnellog. Thanks, Stephen Presley, for that one. A bad challenge. Presley, the third man to be booked in this game, joining Grant Murray and Jason DeVos on the yellow cards. McConnellog will be OK. to bring on Ferraz but not yet they have a free kick and Craig Easton will deliver floated in by Easton away by Hearts though Panjo kept it in oh Stefan Adam through here that the touch took it away from him Alan Combe completely missed kicked it but got away with it Hearts are going to take the throw in quickly though well they were They've wasted it now, Wanjo to Severin, who does try and catch the keeper off his line after all. Yeah, Scott Severin had the right idea, it took him a long time to get the ball back in play here. And Severin only had one thing in his mind, to copy Darren Jackson and chipping Alan Combe. And dead level and attempts at goal. But uh, the two that counted came from Hearts and Jim Jeffries, I'm sure, will feel that. His luck is going to change here tonight. Here's Fulton. Slipping it through to Naismith. And <laughs> he was a little unfortunate. It's a goal kick. And that will give Dundee United, I dare say. Well, I thought it was going to give them a chance to make their change, but it took the goal kick rather quickly. Offside against Stephen Thompson. And now they can take off Thompson, in fact, and bring on Joachim Ferraz, who scored three goals in his first four games of the season. None since, but he has been struggling for quite some time with a little bit of a shoulder problem, which they'll be hoping doesn't affect him today. Ferraz signed from the Portuguese club Belenenses. Hugh Davidson also coming on, or uh, rather Hart are making a change, I beg your pardon. It's uh, Panjo making way, Hugh Davidson on. 
to shore things up for Hearts. Six foot seven inches of him. The big man on for the little man, James for Juanjo. Them, but it's going to bounce out of play. Hearts sitting pretty on a 2-0 lead. And they'll be hoping that this result will really kickstart things for them. were the decisive moments in the game the shot here from Craig Eason beaten away well there by Roddy McKenzie and just a few moments later at the other end tremendous piece of composure from Darren Jackson and the reaction of Jim Jeffries after weeks of torture is clear for everyone to see so there's Nikov chasing this one but Stephen Presley was magnificent in charging back to sort things out As the corner is aimed towards him, punched away by McKenzie. Jackson. Encouraging Gary Wells to make the run, and that's exactly what he does. Just lost his footing more than anything. And that allowed Pasquale to pick up the pieces for Dundee United. Teleznikov. Ferraz, on as a sub, won't get anywhere near that. Yeah, and I think that's why Kevin James is on for Hearts. Ferraz more of an out-and-out -out target man. And would uh, win his fair share of knockdowns, but he uh, might find it hard against Kevin James. Steered away by DeVos, but a throw in for Hearts. duty now is to keep a clean sheet I guess something that Hearts haven't managed since they beat Dundee United 2-0 back in September Fulton took the sting out of that but it set Benitez up now McConnellog he's run it over the line it'll be a throw Stoic side one last week against St Johnston, but uh, only once before this season have they managed back to back wins in the Scottish Premier League, and it's going to stay that way by the look of it. Fulton's hurt again, at least it's not where he was hurt earlier. <laughs> yeah, he's been in the wars tonight, Steve Fulton, and that's a sore one. Hugh Davidson clattering into the back of his head there. You can feel that from up here. Hugh Davidson has been an impressive youngster for Dundee United after breaking into the team this season. Reminder of our Monday night football. It comes from North London and a really exciting derby contest between Tottenham and West Ham. Monday at 7, Sky Sports 1, and for Sky Digital viewers, there's interactive coverage on Sky Sports Extra. And before the action, of course, the boys will give their last word on the weekend action. And there's plenty of that in the Premiership. And a goal fest, in fact. Ferraz, who has got the free kick right on the edge. Yeah, he did well to win it. He's backing in here. 
the minute uh, Kevin James uses his arms, he's always liable to be penalised. And the arms are wrapped round for us there. This is a real chance. The wall's going to have to go back before this free kick is taken, that's for sure. still sorting out the wall. Dundee with a marvellous opportunity here to set up a frantic finale at Tynecastle, and it's going to be... Oh dear, Tereznikov saw that one sail over. Yeah, completely wasted. You have to make the goalkeeper work here. You have to get a shot on target from this angle. And the relief in Ronnie McKenzie's face there as it flies over. And with that may have gone United's last chance of getting back into this game. Perez was offside then, and Hart will get the free kick. Hearts are also in action in midweek, they go to Aberdeen on Wednesday. Also away next Saturday at St Johnston, and then they go to Kilmarnock in the quarterfinals of the CIS Insurance Cup. Rearranged tie after it was postponed last week. Celtic awaiting the winners of that. for a fourth successive victory over Dundee United. It's probably a fixture that Paul Stewart's side seems to look forward to much. And it'll be a corner kick now for the Jambos. One for them by Stefan Adam. It'll be taken for them by Darren Jackson. Kevin James, I suppose he might be a decent target, do Six foot seven. Perez is back there at six foot four to keep an eye on him. And they're having quite a tussle as Darren Jackson sends it in. And James should have got on the end of that, but missed it completely. He certainly escaped the attention of Ferraz, who's now raced up the other end. Benitez. Smith. And Ferraz missed kick. Benitez! And it flashed wide. It's another half chance for United. And Tony Smith's given him a far better delivery on the left here since he's come on here. James does uh, just enough to put Faraz off. It's all happened too late for United. Last are starting to get a better delivery into the box, a bit more wood. How they could have done with that in the first half. Jackson. Free kick for the foul by Easton. I think he takes some of the ball there. He certainly takes Darren Jackson as well. Oh, that's a problem. And Dan's entitled to rest after his contribution tonight. A moment of magic from Jackson. Put Hearts 2 0 up. There haven't been too many other moments of magic in this game. Steve Fulton was going to go off, but uh, change of mind on that front. Here's Grant Merrick. Fulton. Skipping away from Easton and finding Murray. Adam. will settle for the throw on oh, Hamilton Aki's man and Wales floored by Pasquale 
and possibilities here for Hearts. Yeah, signal for Kevin James to go forward to the back post once again. And there's no doubt he'll be the target. Dennis getting the two Dundee United men in the wall back a little bit before this free kick can be taken. Fulton actually sets it up for Grant Murray. I bet it went into the top corner in training. <laughs> well, the variation from Steve Fulton here. And it's a difficult one to take, to be fair. And he does make a very good job of it. Jim Jeffries' side needed a break after their desperate recent run. Three players sent off in the last three games. Three last-minute goals against them. Jackson now. Oh, he nearly got past Pasquale. Nearly, but not quite. Darren Jackson will soon be facing another of his former clubs, Hibs. And getting for Derby just before Christmas. Another game you can see live on Sky Sports. In fact, we end the century with the three derby games in the Scottish Premier League. Dundee, Edinburgh and then Glasgow. Yes, and we'll be seeing Hugh Dallas in Glasgow, because he'll be in charge of that Celtic Rangers clash. The last one of the millennium. So it'll be another interesting day for him. Jackson a signal to the bench that he seems to have a slight problem may have to come off and down two men on him too many men on him DeVos Presley. Bit of a pass to the Hearts bench, that was. A damn giving Gary Wells something to chase. He does chase it, but Alan Cole quickly out. James won that header, but it's going to drop for Smith. Craig Easton. And was calling for it and he's got it but poor Richie Doug Hart's out of danger Smith though to try again for Dundee United Fulton not that one clear Severin helped it on and ball by Hugh Davidson chasing but Kevin James is going to beat him to it and really for Hearts is a question now just seeing out the final few minutes although as we've been saying they do have a habit of conceding late goals Jason DeVos with a long throw comes back to DeVos and it'll be a corner Nikos corner. It comes to nothing. Here's Stefan 
Adam. Oh, it's Gary Wales now. Back to Adam. Magnificent move! That was wonderful! Stefan Adam with the perfect end to a perfect day for Jim Jeffries and Hearts. That's a wonderful finish here. I thought he may have tried to chip Alan Combe, but he goes for the power. And he gets the power and the accuracy, clips the inside of the right-hand post. Good ball there by Wales to play him in in the first place. And the first time effort, left Colm without a hope. And that just about uh, ties this game up now. You can have with William Allen Colm there, and Jim Jeffries at last can relax. Stefan Adam with his fourth of the season, and three of them have been against Hearts. <laughs> against the... Uh, from the United rather, so they'd be delighted to see him again. Darren Jackson makes way, and it's a run out for 18-year-old Alistair Graham, very promising midfielder, who Jim Jeffries rates very highly. Hearts now, looking for another. Another powerful surge from Naismith that time. Here's Fulton. Adam scored both goals that beat Dundee United at Tannadice when Hearts last won eight league games ago. Another one against them today. The boss flicking that one away from Gary Wells. Here's Partridge. Smith. And the United haven't had much joy in Edinburgh this season. They were beaten 3-2 by Hibillion, live on Sky Sports. And well beaten here by Hearts. And time for Davey to pick his man of the match. Well, I think Darren Jackson stole the show with the, the goal and certainly made a tremendous contribution in the second half. Ian. But I think overall, Young Scotland under-21 international, Scott Severin has been superb here tonight. A lot of his work goes unnoticed, but uh, puts in a great shift when his side doesn't have the ball. And I can see why he's so highly thought of here at Tyne Castle. He's my Bank of Scotland man of the match. Jim Jeffries will be rather relieved because things just hadn't been going his way recently, but he's all smiles now. Of time added on as well. So for the first time in four games, quite possibly, Jim's boys aren't going to concede a last gas goal. Paul Sturrock's done to United though. Destroyed today. Yeah, I think you'll be in Jim McLean's office tomorrow, wanting to know how much of the Billy Dodds money he's getting in. Can't ask the youngsters to carry this burden. all over and it's an emphatic victory for Hearts. They were put on their way by Juanjo, the former Barcelona sensation. Darren Jackson with a golden goal got their second and Stefan Adam's effort wasn't bad either. Hearts run of seven league games without a win comes to an end. Adam's cross and the header from Juanjo, the little man, sneaked into the corner. Very dismal first half after that, but Darren Jackson, with a simply superb strike, put Hearts in the comfort zone. And then at the end, Stefan Adam rattled in another. And that will do wonders for his confidence, which hasn't been too high lately. Dundee United finding life without Billy Dodds. Rather tough. Hearts back to winning ways for the first time in the league since the end of September. It finishes at Tynecastle. Hearts 3, Dundee United 0. Four big games coming up over the next week on Sky Sports. It starts tomorrow night with Spurs against West Ham on the Monday night football. Then on Thursday, a choice of UEFA Cup ties. There's Newcastle against Roma, Leeds against Spartak Moscow and Nantes against Arsenal from 6.45 on Sky Sports News. Well,
Well, at Tynecastle tonight, a win and an important one for Hearts. Goals from Juanjo, Jackson and Adam. And disappointment for Dundee United. They've lost Dodds and they've lost this one tonight. Reaction after this. At Tynecastle tonight, a win and a pretty emphatic win in the end for Hearts. 3-0, they beat Dundee United. Three bookings on the night, Murray and Presley of Hearts and big Jason DeVos, the Canadian of Dundee United, all booked. Well, Hearts pretty much ran the first half, but they couldn't capitalise on the early Juanjo goal as they should have done. And it was a lot more even in the second half, curiously. In fact, United noticeably improved. But nonetheless, they still ran out 3-0 losers. Man of the match, Scott Severn of Hearts and Hearts goal scorer Darren Jackson are both with David Tanner. Darren, congratulations, a win bonus. Remember those? Yeah, it was a long time ago, but the boys fought hard tonight. It will certainly not be our best performance, but yeah, the manager has to go out and uh, fight for every ball, and I think we've done that. You must be pleased with the way you ground out the result. Yeah, we did. Um, we played a bit of football as well, but um, to get back winning again, you have to start with hard work, and I think we've done that. Scott Hearts haven't won a game since you last played Dundee United. Uh, what's been going wrong in between times? Yeah, I think it's just a lack of confidence um, going through the team at the moment. Um, we're not working for the whole 90 minutes. Um, man, you're trying to get into us. Um, and we've done it today. We've scored three good goals and won, won the match comfortably. Now, without uh, Colin Cameron, the midfield had to be restructured. How do you think you coped tonight? Yeah, I thought we coped well. Um, Darren and Stevie. Darren came back in the team and done really well. Um, I think Colin will struggle to get back in the team now. <laughs> There's a lot of youngsters in the, the Dundee United team. Um, I guess they could benefit from some experience in there. How, how much does playing alongside old timers like Darren? I know he went let me saying that. How does that help you? Oh, he's brilliant, Darren, um, Colin, and Stevie. Been a great help. Um, helped me all during the season, last season as well. And Darren, can you believe that you didn't get the Man of the Match award? Oh, that's Stevie Proven, eh? Never gives me it, so. Um, <laughs> but I'm delighted to. It's Stevie's won it tonight and uh, over the moon with the result. He's done well, hasn't he? He's done exceptionally well. Um, I think you could put him in, in any side. Um, he's a great prospect for Hearts, and um, hopefully, hopefully he's here for years. I think he's old enough to drink the champagne. I'll let you hand it over. The Bank of Scotland, SPL Man of the Match, Scott Severn. Cheers. Davey. Thanks a lot. Cheers, Davey. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> Cheers, Davey. Well done to young Scott Severn. Played well tonight, Charlie, didn't he? Very well. He's very impressive. We had uh, Craig Brown when we had him on just the other week. He was raving about Severn. Good prospect. I didn't think he had as an impressive a game as what I've seen him had before. But I think at this time of the year, Jim, in Hearts, is a, a miserable run which has been going on. It was mainly about the result rather than the performance. I think that showed tonight. I personally thought Naismith was probably their best player, but David Prove and I don't always agree. <laughs> Do you think Hearts deserve to, to win this one, Charlie, by three? No, I don't think so. I, I actually think when we started this game, we were looking at a tight affair. And we were also looking at the... The problems that would face in D United now without Billy Dodds, their best player. But I thought this was a wonderful move. Not a great defender from the D United. Paul Sturrock will be unhappy with that. But credit must go to the pick out in the spot by Stefan Adam. It's easy just to throw this in and be hopeful he doesn't. And it's a great power header right in the corner. No chance for the keeper. And after four minutes, you really felt Hearts would grow in confidence and mm. the D United would probably then have to go and, and try and attack a little bit more. But I was disappointed with the response of the United more than Hearts. They didn't really get going in midfield. A half-turned shot. Not a great effort from McSwigan, who was a little disappointing tonight. But a uh, comfortable saving in. But you just felt it never really got going. There was no real pace or fluency to the game. Really scrap, scrappy first half. This was the one half chance they had. A corner log. But I have to say, I thought him and the lad Tony Smith who came on for the United were their best players. And I think that is... Sometimes a worry for Paul Sturrock. That was good, a good header there, I think it was from Partridge. Comfortable save. But United have got to do more. They've got to get mm. service to the strikers and play the ball. And Stevie Fulton take this off the tour. Stefan Adam. Fulton, you're not a natural finisher, son. Leave it to the strikers. <laughs> but if you're a Dundee United fan, Charlie, not an awful lot. As you rightly said, the young Smith did impress. Well, this, this was an impressive move, Jim. And this, at that time in the match, the D United were the most positive team. And I think they're very unlucky. It's a lovely pass from Smith, good vision. Little unlucky to see it come off the post, and it came back to him a little bit too quick. And but then this the roof is, came in. This is the danger. Now, what I would like the people at home, especially the kids watching home, is that his first touch doesn't always look more impre that impressive. But what he's doing, he's already made his mind up, 
the touch is to set himself up. He knows where the keeper is. It's experienced, it's classy. And in a game like tonight, where it was scrappy, there wasn't a great amount of quality. We were grateful for Darren ja Jackson's intervention. And this was a great finish by Adam, well, wasn't it? Well, it was a build-up again. The, the clever link-up, the back heel, the positive pass again from Gary Wills, who looked as if he is another prospect for Hearts. There it is, the link-up. Doesn't rest there. He wants it in front of him. A lovely pass and a great finish. And in the end, Jim Jeffries, I think, can look at the last 10, 15 minutes and think to himself, we possibly did deserve to win 3-0. We've got three good points. And I think he'll be delighted the way they finished the game. And now they can go forward to play Aberdeen away Wednesday. We are positive attitude. Charlie, you've set it up perfectly. Let's hear from Jim Jeffries now. He's with David Sanna. Jim, you've just watched the story of the game. I think you enjoyed the, the finishing there. Yes, uh, I felt we controlled the first half. Um, you know, with Dundee United sat deep, we got an early goal, and uh, you know it was difficult to create any chances. Um, the second half, I think Dundee United pushed forward. We got a wee break when it came off the post, but it's the first break I think we've had for a few weeks. And but when they started pushing forward, that suited us fine because there was gaps at the back, and you can see by the two goals. When there was space in behind the dam and uh, Will McSwiggan and, and Wales and, and Darren Jackson come from the middle of the park, it suits them. So uh, we got in there and two great finishes. Uh, so I'm pleased because we had a few players out tonight. Uh, Cameron and Locke were, with, were suspended and two or three injuries. So it's great that the squads come out there tonight and uh, filled in and, and it was a good performance. And I think the second goal, it was on the counter because uh, Roddy McKenzie made a great save and then really the players raced up field and a great finish and great play by Darren Jackson. Yeah, I say to Roddy after you know after the game in the dressing room there, I says that was a turning point for us. He's made a terrific save, and from that we went straight up the park and uh, hit them on the break and, and scored a terrific goal. So uh, you know, as I say, we've been due a break, but that'll do the players' confidence a lot of good, and hopefully now we can get on a wee run. And you must be amazed, no last-minute goal conceded. Well, I was delighted when Willie Young put up the board, and it only showed one minute because it's been four minutes uh, in the, the games that we've lost uh, the goal and injury time but I think we were a wee bit more confident when the board went up because we were three goals in front. No wins in seven games there, is it just perseverance, have you just persevered and kept battling away to get this one tonight? Well as I said before, it's, it's it, you know people try to say similar to last year, it's not at all. We couldn't have went last year, we couldn't have went down even on Saturday to Kilmarnock and got two goals up and had great chances to finish it. We allowed Kilmarnock back in the game and you know, there's games against Celtic here. You know, people who were at the game uh, will tell you that we were we should have got some out of the game. We've been fortunate, Motherwell, and uh, as I say, we we might probably deserve more points than we got out of the games. But uh, you know, as the longer it goes, of course, the confidence can be affected. But you know, when you get a result like tonight against a team that's third in the league, then it's going to help our confidence, and we can we can go in for there. And briefly, Jim, uh, Fitzroy Simpson and Gordon Petrich, your new uh, players, couldn't play tonight. Um, how important will they be for you? Yeah, as I say, it's a strong squad, and I said if I brought in two or three players, they are going to make it stronger. We're still on the lookout for to, to make it even stronger still, but uh, they're two good captures, and uh, as I say, we've got a good response for the players tonight, so it might be even hard for them to get in, because we had Cameron out tonight, lockout tonight, Flugel, and McKinnon down injury, so, and, and Fabian Leclerc, so we've got a good, strong squad. And if you give me a one-word answer to this, is Gordon Petrich a replacement for Paul Ritchie? Well, I don't know. Paul Ritchie, you know, I thought he had an outstanding game tonight. But Paul Ritchie, you know, has hinted that he uh, possibly move on at the end of the season. So Gordon Petrus is a, a great replacement for him. In, in a word, thank you. <laughs> Jim Jeffries has <laughs> never believed in one-word answers, David. You should know that by now. Now, when we come back, we hear from Rangers' new boy, Billy Dodds. And we'll also take another look at the quality finishing on show at Town Castle tonight. We'll be right back. Hearts beat Dundee United by three goals to nil tonight at Tynecastle. Charlie would agree it was never a classic, nope. but we saw some good finishing tonight from Hearts, and that must please Jim Jeffries. Yeah, and good movement, I thought, at times. I think the, the goals were all created mainly from the wider positions. The second goal was, was different because it was a counter-attack, but the first goal in particular I thought was a, a positive issue of the way that Hearts started the game. You know, it's played wide, he gets a bit of space, but he doesn't just throw a, hope, a hopeful cross in. He's actually picked out Wanjo, and I think actually Darren Jackson is just behind him, also waiting to see if he wants it. It's a lovely header, but it was a lovely build-up move. Good bit of vision, quality cross, and if you get that quality into the box, 
you will get rewards at the end of the day. The thing is, not to be overcritical, they should have capitalised on that, shouldn't they? Well, I thought you go one up yeah. that early. I thought they should have because I thought Dundee United, maybe other than uh, Craig East, Easton in the midfield department, I didn't think they really done very much at all in the game. Not major contributions. They work hard enough, but you need quality in there. And I think when Hearts had that, they had a lot of possession, Fulton in particular. You've got to take advantage of it. And I thought when Naismith in particular got down the left, gave them major problems. And I was just waiting for the time to come. But in the second half, once they'd settled that McK McKenzie was in form, looked decent, they took it from there. Charlie, we're, I'm going to break you off there just at this stage. Let's go back to Tynecastle. Dundee United lost Billy Dodds, of course, to Rangers, and they lost 3 0 tonight. Paul Sturrock cannot be happy. He's with David Tanner. Paul, what do you think of life without Billy Dodds so far? Well, Billy Dodds is not here any longer. I'm saying he's been a great servant for the football club, but we've got to look beyond that now. Uh, you know, and tonight, uh, obviously, we're, we're a wee bit disappointed. We didn't feel uh, we, we, we let ourselves down uh, defensively in a couple of goals. And obviously you can't give a quality team like Hearts that kind of start. Do you think the second goal was the turning point for you? Because you were caught in the counter, I guess. Again, the naivety of some of the younger players who, with exuberance over that first 25 minutes of the second half, they were chasing the game and thought they were going to get themselves a goal. One or two of them don't rem uh, remember where they should be positioned at corners and we finish up uh, you know, getting, getting a sucker blow, which really took the steam out of our, our, our team after that. Will you be given money to buy some experienced players now, Paul? There's been no doubts, I'm saying, uh, but again, as I've said all along, I will not be panicked by just, you know, bringing people in for the sake of that. I want the right people in at the football club. I've said all along that this job was a marathon rather than a sprint. Yes, it, in the end, we do know we've lost our quality striker and we've got to go and find somebody for, uh, as a replacement. That was always on the cards anyway. Uh, but, you know, I was delighted with uh, the, the young boy McConnell's performance tonight and that augurs well for the future. And, you know, we, we started with six players under 21 and, and uh, were very, very pleased they, on some of their performances. Naivety was definitely a factor and losing a goal so early in the game didn't help. Could Dundee United not have in any way kept Billy Dodds? I mean, is your ambition under question here over the, the sale of Dodds? No, because in the end, we've, already, we've already made the court. There was a clause in the contract that meant that we had, our hands were tied. Uh, as I said already, Billy Dodds is an exceptional player and it's a disappointing weekend for the... But as I said to my players, the sun came out the next morning. There is light, there is day after, after Billy Dodds. He, as I said, he's been fantastic for us. I've got to go and f do my job now, find pe personnel to come in to strengthen us again and take this young team uh, on to the next stage. It was, always, it was always going to be that eventually over the years that McConnell, Logan and Thompson were going to go together. I'm very excited for them. They're Scottish born and I feel they'll, be, they'll do very, very well. But as I said, we've maybe have to bring them in a bit earlier than I hoped. What about the situation with contracts and players w when they get these uh, escape clauses in them? It, is, is there anything that clubs can do now to, to try and fight back against the Bosman rulings? Well, it's a difficult scenario. I'm saying, uh, you know, I think in the end of the day, the importance of getting these types of quality players t to the football club, uh, you know, is, is vitally important. Billy Dodds was, did very well for us uh, last season, kept us up with his goals and was doing very well for us again. So, we, you know, we can't grumble. Paul, thanks for your honesty. Right, thanks. Paul Sturrock there. Charlie, he said it, naivety all over the place for Dundee United in their ranks tonight. And it certainly showed when, when Jackson bagged the second goal for Hearts. Yeah, Everyone I, caught out. Yeah, I mean, if we, we track uh, Darren's run here, he, his desire to get there, I don't think he's the quickest anymore, he would accept that. I would have to say that it wasn't the best pass from Stefan Adam. It wasn't put in front of him. But he, set, he, he made his mind up, he set the first touch up, and that made the chip available for him. It's a little glance at the goalkeeper, and it's quality. When you see this, it's sheer quality. You must admire it, and you must respect. He didn't look too happy when he scored the goal. I don't know why, because it was a great finish. They, they, they were down then, but they really were out when Adam punished them for the, the third goal. Yeah. And really, Sturrock, well, he's got an awful lot of thinking to do now, Charlie, as he heads back to Dundee from Edinburgh. Well, I think he needs a replacement in quickly. I love this build-up. A simple back heel from Adam. Good movement from Wales. And what he's doing to you, he's just saying to the, the young kid, you're just on, just put it in front of me, don't let me check my stride, and it's a sweet strike, and a lovely goal. Jim Jeffries will be delighted the way they finish this game. Nothing but confidence at the end of the night for the Hearts team. So, after the curtailed weekend programme, Rangers are a point ahead of Celtic with two games in hand. Dundee United stay third despite losing tonight. Then come Motherwell and Hearts, who have climbed above Hibs on goal difference. Dundee are now seventh, followed by St Johnson, Kilmarnock and Aberdeen. Now, there are two rearranged games coming up in midweek, Aberdeen against Hearts and Motherwell against Kilmarnock. 
Then next Saturday it's Aberdeen against Celtic, Hibernian against Motherwell, Rangers against Kilmarnock and St Johnston against Hearts. And next Sunday we are live at Tannadice for Dundee United who lost tonight against Dundee. Well, as we said at the top of the show, Billy Dodds was sold yesterday by Dundee United to Rangers. As he explained, he didn't have much choice in the matter. Once they, once they were in, there was only one decision to be made. Uh, I know that will hurt the Dundee United fans, but as I say, if anybody to see me at that club yesterday at Dundee United, I mean, everybody I looked at round about the club, um, I just, it, it was so sad, I mean, it, it really was, it was a strange situation because I was getting the biggest move in my career, but every time, even when I looked at the gaffer, I, I felt like, I mean, it's not a sob case, but filling up and I just had to get, get out of there as uh, quick as possible because it wasn't a, wasn't a good memories for me, you know. Because I guess you should have been preparing for Sky Sports live game at Tyne Castle. Exactly, it was, uh, it was all getting built up and focused on that and uh, I was looking forward to it like any other game and uh, the way my season's been going, I, I've scored 10 goals already, I was just hoping to add to that but things can come right out of the blue and this uh, certainly did. What about the job ahead of you here? Can you, are, are you here as a stopgap or are you here for, for the duration? Can you hold on to your place? I think if I was here as a stopgap and I signed a one-year contract and then after it uh, I'd have been away again, but no, I've signed a three-and-a-half-year deal here and um, anybody who knows me, they know I'm up for a, 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 a battle and, uh, and anybody who knows my character knows that I'll be, I'll be trying to stay in this team for as long as possible and I'm probably at the fittest in my career as well. Rangers play this season has been a joy to watch on occasion. Have you considered what, how many goals you could score with that kind of backup? Don't set targets, but obviously I'm going to get uh, a lot more chances, which will be nice for me. Um, no disrespect to the Dundee United players, but I mean they said there was a one-man team up there. That's so far for the truth because really, I mean Dundee United have got a lot of good players. That I wouldn't have got the goals I got, and uh, I mean I just wish the boys all the best there. But obviously I'm going to get a lot more chances here, and I hope to take a few. Billy Dodds, Rangers player now, talking earlier to David Tanner. Charlie, what kind of a job will Dodds do for Rangers? Well, I'll give them work rate. I think Advocat likes players who work, so even people at Alberts have found that to their cost. But I think he'll work his socks off. I don't think he'll have the ideal partner that maybe like you, Johansson, with sheer pace that he can come and link up in midfield. They'll work his socks off. He'll get more chances, he's quite rightly pointed out. And, of course, he'll score goals. I think it is a short-term issue. Next season, we'll wait and see whether he can demand the, the place. But short term, it's a clever move. OK, Charlie, thanks. Well, that is it for tonight. The next live football on Sky Sports is the Monday Night Football. Tottenham against West Ham on Sky Sports 1 and Extra. On Thursday, three UEFA Cup third round second leg ties. Newcastle against Roma, Leeds against Spartak Moscow and Nantes against Arsenal from 6.45 on Sky Sports News. On Friday night, the nationwide live game is Brentford against Chesterfield from 7 on Sky Sports 2 and, of course, Sky Sports Extra. Then on Sunday, from the third round of the AXA-sponsored FA Cup, it's the tie of the round, Tottenham against Newcastle. That's from 3.30 on Sky Sports 2 and Extra. And we're back next Sunday from 5.30 on Sky Sports 1 with the last Dundee derby of the century. Sounds dramatic. Hearts won 3-0. If you're a jambo, you must have loved it. Bye for now.